Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at how Flusher defaults Banana on Inferno, so let's get started. So typically at the start of the round, Flusher he's going to throw a Molotov at this half wall position right at the start to prevent anybody from peeking early at the half wall area. And then if he doesn't meet any resistance, he'll normally just throw a grenade towards this corner area, and then sometimes he'll follow it up with a flash as well. So if you have a teammate, here's how you can add to the default. So first, Flusher is going to throw a Molotov towards that half wall area, and then he's going to throw a nade at the corner. Now with your second teammate, he can throw a Molotov towards the corner, which then pushes this player who could be here back towards the site, and it allows you to isolate the player who could be playing towards the sandbag area. So now at this point, Flusher, you can peek this player towards sandbag without having to worry about somebody peeking from this left corner. So here we see the power of using two people at Banana. So first we're going to see that Golden, he's the first spawn, he's going to throw a Molotov at the half wall position. Flusher, he's going to throw a nade at the half wall, so even if somebody decides to peek the half wall, he's definitely going to take damage. Then Flash is going to line up a flash along this left side, while Golden scales up along the right. He doesn't need to turn from this flash. Golden, he's also going to throw a nade towards this corner. However, this nade slightly misses, but you get the idea. Then as the flash pops, you can see that Golden swings out a little bit wide to try to catch this player who may be playing towards this sandbag corner area. Golden gets the kill, and at the same time, Flusha also throws a Molotov right at the corner right here. So when that kill happens, you can see that because of that Molotov, this player, he's not able to come back and be able to trade. And that's really the power of this tactic here, where you're trying to push this player who could be at the corner away towards the site, so that way you can get an isolated fight on the player's sandbag. So here's a fast push you can do with the MAC-10. So first we're going to see that Flusha is going to throw a flash for the corner position. He has a teammate as well, and his teammate's going to throw a Molotov for that car half wall position, and he's also going to line up a flash along this left side. Basically, Flusha is going to be scaling up along this right side as quickly as he possibly can. So here we're going to see that he throws a couple flashes, here we see a Molotov, and this is his teammate's Molotov. And because it's his teammate's Molotov, he can actually push right through it, taking reduced damage. So here we can see him push right through the Molotov and be able to get this kill on the player's sandbag. So this is a really good play that you can use, where basically you take advantage of your teammate's Molotov and you push straight through it, as the CTs aren't going to be expecting you to do so. So sometimes your opera is going to want to go for a B pick, and your number one job is to make sure that he stays alive. So here we can see that Flusha throws an early Molotov to his car, JW goes for the corner pick, and Flusha, all he's going to do here is just make sure he has a smoke out for the CT's Molotov. So here we're going to see that JW, as soon as he gets that kill, Flusha throws the smoke to allow JW to escape. So sometimes he may want to use a slower approach towards Banana, and this is a good flash you can use towards this half wall position. And basically it'll blind any opera who's posted up in this area towards his logs position. So here we're going to see that the opera gets forced away, and after that you can also throw that Molotov towards the corner, where he's basically going to be pushed away towards the site, and now you can have an isolated fight onto the player's sandbag if you want to. So here's a way to deal with that player who might be jump spotting towards this half wall position. So here we see Crystal, he's basically jump spotting. And in Flusha, he basically decides to just throw a nade at this half wall position. And look at how much damage it does though, it basically does 95 damage. This also acts as a trigger point for them to throw their Molotovs towards this car position and take it towards Banana. So what do you do when the CTs do full Banana control on you? So right here we're going to see that JW is going to go for a B pick. is going to notice the deep smoke from the CTs and as well he's going to see this first Molotov. His response is basically throw a Molotov back to kind of push these CTs away. And here he notices a second Molotov, so now he knows for sure this is going to be B control, so he starts falling back. JW starts falling back towards the cubby as well. And JW, all he needs to do is just stay alive in this position. Because what's going to happen here is that Flusha and Golden, they're both going to throw utility back to push the CT away from being able to peek the bottom banana. So as soon as that happens, now these CTs, they're forced to kind of go all the way back towards the site. JW, he's still playing in front of the smoke, and because of that, the CTs are not able to fully clear this out. And now at this point, both Flusha and Golden can retake this banana position. Here's another example of countering B control. So once again, the CTs, they throw a deep smoke banana. Golden, he actually decides to go inside the smoke here to extinguish this first fire. Then Flusha, he has a Molotov ready, and he's waiting for a particular timing here to throw this Molotov. So here we're going to see the CTs, as soon as they throw the double nades, that's when Flusha throws the small top because as soon as the CTs throw the double nades, that's typically when they decide to peek. So he's going to throw that small top, that small top basically makes it difficult for Crystal to peek, and that's exactly how Golden gets this kill. And after that happens, you're going to see that Flusha throws one more flash in front of him to be able to retake towards this banana position. So here we'll see this from Crystal's point of view, so he's going to throw that deep smoke, the close small top, and then he's going to throw a nade towards logs. Then we're going to see that that timing of when those nades come through is exactly when Flush will throw some all top towards half wall. And basically right at this point here, Crystal needs to make a decision of whether he wants to push forward or whether he wants to fall back. And because this small top forces him to push forward, it basically puts Golden in a better position to be able to kill him. 
So as I mentioned before, the timing with the nades is very important. So here we're going to see the CTs, they're going to throw deep smoke banana, and you're going to see that flush out, he's not waiting for anything else other than when those nades are going to come through. So right here we're going to see that as soon as those nades come through, flush out, he's going to throw the flash, and he's also going to throw a nade at half wall. And because of this, this is basically perfectly timed to hit the player when he takes his half wall position. So this brings me to my next point. Notice how Flusha, he's not really offering that much resistance and trying to take back Banana here. In this round, he's actually giving it up completely. He's more than happy to let the CTs have it. And when you do give up Banana Control, you want to give it up so much to the point where the second B player, he actually wants to rotate back towards A. And a good way to also ensure that this happens is to put some pressure towards mid so that this player, he actually wants to come back towards A. So after you've given up Banana Control fully and you put some pressure at brackets to put the CTs in a 4A position, it's time to take back Banana Control. So here we're going to see that Flusha, all he's going to do is try to put pressure on the solo B player. And the solo B player, a lot of the time, he's just going to be jump spying between the car half wall position. So here we're going to see that Flusha, he's just going to try to peek and try to take contact on this player. As soon as contact is made, this player is going to be forced to fall back towards the site. And what this does is it creates an effect where he's going to fall back towards the site. The second B player, he now has to come back towards B because they have to respect the fact that you could be retaking banana control. And ultimately what this does is now you have banana control, now you have bracket control, and now you have more options to end the round. So sometimes he may be able to sneak up along this right wall whenever this player is solo. So here we're going to see that this player is playing on top of this half wall position. Flush is going to be creeping along this right side where this player actually can't spot him. And as soon as the Molotov comes through, Flusha is actually ahead of the timing where this player expects him to be. Because of that, Flusha is able to get this kill. So sometimes the CTs may like to do the retake nades on you. So that's basically the car Molotov as well as the half wall smoke. And the one thing to keep in mind about whenever these nades are used, it's actually very reactionary based. It's either something that happens at Banana or something that happens elsewhere on the map that may prompt the CTs to use these nades. So here we're going to see that it's actually because Stiko died at alt middle. So now they're throwing these nades so that this player here can actually rotate back to its A site. And that's exactly what's going to happen. If you don't have any teammates in this area, you can basically just give this up and just let the utility fade. And then just proceed with the round after that. So here we see a situation where Golden's actually ahead of Flusha. And the CGs are going to throw the retake banana nades. And usually because these nades are thrown by one person, here's two different counters you can use. So the first counter is that Flusha, he's just simply just going to throw a smoke ahead of him. So that it basically blocks the entrance and discourages the CT from running to push up. And the second counter is that basically just push up on the player as he's throwing the nades. So here we see Golden, he basically pushes up on him towards the site to get the kill. So if you're towards this half wall position, this is a great nade to throw for the coffin player. So typically when Fnatic like to go towards B, it's usually Flusha who's going to enter the site as he doesn't really have any utility at this point. And it makes sense because he's usually using his utility to take banana control in the first place, so he doesn't have any utility left over. This is the most common flash that Fnatic like to throw on their B hits. So here we're going to see that JW, he's simply going to throw this flash to allow Flusha to be able to push into the site. So here's a nice little trick you can use. So the CT is just throwing a smoke and Flusha is going to get really close to the smoke. But he also has a teammate, JW, who's about to throw this flash room to its site that I showed earlier. So basically, Flusha is going to right-click a flash, make sure that it makes a ton of noise under the ground. Then JW, at the same time, he throws his flash, and that's exactly how he gets this kill. From Hampus' point of view, because he hears Flusha's flash bounce off the ground, he's only going to dodge that flash and not JW's. So here's an explosive way to entry towards the site. So here, JW, he's just going to throw a flash, and Flusha at the same time is going to throw this flash here. It's going to bounce off the wall and land towards the site, which allows Flusha to actually beat the Molotov and cross towards this water area. So from Alex's point of view, you can see how explosive this take is. So as soon as the flash comes over, Flusha has already rounded the corner. He basically beats his Molotov and actually beats him towards this water position. And because of that, Alex isn't expecting him to already be behind him. So here we're going to see a variation on that tactic. So once again, JW, he's going to line up that flash towards site. And then Golden, he's actually going to be the second one in. And notice the slight coordination that they have here. So Golden, he's actually going to have the smoke out so that Flusha can have his gun out on the entry. So the Flush comes through. Flush is able to come in first. Golden is able to throw that smoke towards CT. And they both path themselves along this right side wall where they're going to cross the smoke underneath so that the player boost can't actually spot them. And because of that, Flusha is able to cross towards water. He's able to get his first kill and he's able to find this player towards that new box area. So this is some good utility to know if you're rushing towards B. So this smoke here is going to land towards CT spawn. And then this Molotov here is actually going to land towards Spool. 
And that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like what you saw, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more future content. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one.